Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we are called to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Giving honor and praises to Bishop Marvin Frank Thomas, my dean, and to the presiding elders, conference leaders, and to all of you, my sisters and brothers who are gathered for this fall gathering. God bless you. I am honored and elated to be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we bless you right now for this moment. We give you praise for another opportunity to be in your presence and to hear a word from you. God, we ask now that you would touch our minds, our hearts, and our spirits. God, that we would hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Our desire and our plea is that we don't leave here the way we came. So illuminate this hour with your preaching power. Have your way in this place, and we'll give your name praise and all the glory. In the matchless name of your darling son, Jesus, those that love God and attend to obey God said together, amen. Amen, amen. Our subject, the theme that Bishop Thomas shared with me, your theme for uh, this gathering is back to basics, refocusing on discipleship propelled by the Great Commission. That's a whole mouthful. But I want to invite you to join me, uh, come go with me to the gospel according to John chapter 15, and we'll begin reading at verse 15 and 16. John 15, 16, 15 and 16, reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and it reads like this. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I want to talk uh, from this subject, um, building on your theme, we want to talk about next level discipleship. Next level discipleship. Life is about process. Every living entity has a designated process for growth, development, and reproduction. It's called a cycle of life. Butterflies go through a process that we call metamorphosis, where they go from a life cycle, from an egg to a caterpillar to a pupper, and then to an adult, they become a butterfly. And, and even in the body of Christ, even as believers, there is a process that we must go to. Uh, the sad thing is that, uh, that, that sometimes we don't really engage the process. Discipleship is a process. It is the process of learning to live for the glory of God by faith in, and in obedience to Jesus through a relationship with other Christian followers over time, right? So it's a process. You, you, you're not only just having given God glory and following Jesus, but you must also be in relationship with other Christians. It is an ongoing relationship between one believer who assumes the role of mentor and another believer or non-believer who assumes the role of an apprentice. In most cases, discipleship involves one would-be Christian follower learning from another more mature Christian follower. Matthew 28, uh, 18 through 20 has been noted throughout Christian communities as the Great Commission, it, the mandate for disciples of Christ to reproduce. After centuries of church planning, ordination, and convocations, the Great Commission may be better known as the Great Omission uh, because we have not been attentive to carry out what Jesus has said. One will ask the question, why would it be the great omission? It's because contemporary discipleship is often existential. It is what I do or what I tell others to do. Whereas I believe Jesus is teaching us that discipleship is more about 
who we are and what we tell ourselves. The message you tell yourself, what you believe about yourself, will determine your ability to be able to disciple somebody else. Particularly if you are supposed to mentor somebody else, and they're supposed to follow after you. If you're not intact, if you don't know who you are, you don't know whose you are or what you're supposed to do, and it is impossible. Well, you can mentor, but you won't mentor them in the right direction. Uh, nearing the end of his earthly ministry, Jesus gives us some instructions. He instructs his disciples on their responsibility to continue the ministry. John gives us a window into this next level of discipleship as I hurry to this close. John uh, maps out the pathway to next level discipleship. He, he tells us in John 13, chapter 13, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples, tells Judas to go and do it quickly, and he foretells Peter's de denial while still talking to his disciples. John, in chapter 14, he encourages the disciples not to be troubled, promise to send the Holy Spirit. But when we embark on chapter 15, we now find Jesus in an intimate conversation with those who were closest to him with his 11 disciples who's at this meeting who's there? it's important to note who's there because I want you to know that Judas is not there the Pharisees and the scribes are not there Nicodemus is not there but who is there that those who sincerely want to learn, those who realize that Jesus has the answer, those who are looking for real love connection, those who are expecting a revolution, grassroot workers, the marginalized, objectified, ostracized, the least, the lost, and the left out, and the locked out. These are they who gather around to hear Jesus talk about the principles of discipleship. I'm not one to subscribe to the mindset that people are connected through pleasurable experiences. Typically, we look for relationships with family or friends. We connect around what we have in common. We, we like the same people, the same music, the same places. But I really don't believe that people are connected holistically and eternally by pleasure. I think the real connect is that people connect through pain. If you're going to have anything solid in a realm of love, whether it's strage or agape, it is typically built on a connectivity of pain. Mothers against drunk drivers connected over tragedy. Some people find their best friend at an AA meeting connecting over their pain. The open hunting and slaughtering of black males, especially uh, uh, by police, uh, has exposed us to murder and, and trauma, and people are connected by that pain under the mantra of Black Lives Matter. Uh, black lives are worthy. Black lives are beloved. Black lives are needed. People are connected through their pain. No wonder 1 Peter 5 and 10 says, after you've suffered a little while, then God will make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle. If we're going to be next level disciples, if we're going to go to the next level in discipleship, we need to understand that there is a price, there is some pain, there is a struggle, but it is worth it. Somebody said, well, how can I get to the next level? I'm glad you asked. This text brings it out for us in John 15. Jesus instructs his disciples before he gets to Gethsemane, before he gets uh, to his praying ground, in the garden, in, in, their, in the vineyard, he takes time to talk about discipleship. Come here with me in this text because he calls them to his side and he begins to tell them after he talks about them being connected to the vine. He talked about pruning them. He talked about uh, being able to make sure that they bear fruit. He catches them now in 15, and he says to them, I no longer call you slave, but I'm now calling you a friend. I stopped by to tell you that next level discipleship, it is personal. Please understand that when Jesus calls a person, it's a personal endeavor. He says, I no longer call you servant, but now you're my friend. And if you're my friend, that means I'm responsible for you. That means I got your back. That means that you're not in it by yourself. That means that I'm sitting you on a journey, but you got to know that you're going in my name. He says, you're my friend because I'm telling you everything my father told me. I'm showing you everything my father showed me. We're in this thing together. 
Next level discipleship is personal. But not only is it personal, but next level discipleship is personal. Come on in the text because the text says that after he gave them the promotion, before they were slaves, before they were just servants, but now he's called them friend. Now he says, not only are you my friend, but I need you to know that you didn't choose me. Good God Almighty. But I chose you. Come here, I need you to understand that you are not where you are by chance. You didn't get there by accident, but God put his hands on your life. God chose you, just like he said, Jeremiah, from the womb. He says, I, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. I know somebody said, well, I decided to join this church. I decided to give my life to Christ. You might want to think that, but please know, the first mover on your heart is God. God is the first one that comes after us. God is the first one that comes and, and, and softens your heart so that you can yield. Discipleship is not only personal, but it is purposeful because Jesus says that you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Well, Jesus, why would you choose me? Couldn't you choose somebody else? Well, Jesus says that I know what's in you. The text seems to suggest that Jesus says the reason I chose you the reason that I pulled you out of the darkness into the light is because I have invested in you. It's something when somebody invests in you, then they expect to get something out of you. I, I stopped by to let you know that next level discipleship is personal and it's purposeful because Jesus wants you to know that you have purpose that you have value, that there is something that God wants to do for you. But the final thing I need you to know that it is perpetual, that just because you are a friend of Jesus and you've been chosen by Jesus, I don't want you to go park in your nice house or go sit up in your nice a uh, living room and, and act like you got it made in the shade but it is supposed to be perpetual that you have a job to do the last part of 16 says not only did I choose you but I appointed you catch this to go and bear fruit yeah that's it right there that's the evangelistic struggle. That, that is the discipleship mode. He says that I have appointed you. I've given you assignment that you must go and bear fruit. And I love this part of the text because when he gives me assignment, my assignment comes with some uncertainty. I'm not sure if it's going to work out. But we learned early in John 15 that the bearing fruit is God's work. I just got to be receptive to God working in me. But I love this last part of the text because he said not only will you bear fruit, but your fruit will last. In other words, he says your potential is linked to the one who made the deposit. I'm so glad today that God made a deposit in me. And so I can rest assured that if I go like he told me to go, that I'll bear fruit and the fruit will last. In other words, he's saying that you can feel my love and you can feel my embrace if you know me as your source and not your resource. He says unto us that th this is a journey that we're going on. And while we're on this journey, that what we do will last. I wish I had somebody to get this. Because the text says that your fruit will last. In other words, the work that I do. That I don't have to worry about if folk going to believe me. Because he's promised that it's going to bring forth what I said. But not only that, he ends it. He says that your fruit will last. So that when you ask the Father, in my name, your prayers are going to be answered. I'm going to my seat, but I need you to know. That it's one thing to go out and try to bring other folk. But you've got to know that you are in it yourself. And I'm glad that he has promised me that if I stay connected to the vine, if I abide in him and the word abide in me, that I can ask what I will and the father will give it to you. If you are interested today in going to the next level of discipleship, You've got to know that it is personal, that you've got to get it in your heart. You've got to remember that it is personal, 
purposeful, that there is a job for you to do. But finally know that it is perpetual, that you got to share it with somebody else. And what you do for Christ will last. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, an ever-loving soul to save and fit it for the sky. Good evening, my sisters and brothers. But I charge you today that if you really want to be in the service of the Lord, then you've got to go to the next level of discipleship.